With the Daytona 500 this coming Sunday, I think now would be a great time to break down the facts you need to know about the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season. Whether you're a diehard fan or someone just getting into NASCAR, I'm going to take you through the teams and drivers in the highest levels of stock car racing, as well as the series schedule. All information will be accurate at the time of this video getting made, so if you're watching this in say August and drivers have changed or been fired, sponsors leave and come aboard, things like that, just know I can't predict the future. Let's start off with the championship format first. It's been much derided, but I'll try to explain it anyway. The results of the first 26 races determine a grid of 16 drivers for the playoffs. Spots are reserved by wins in those first 26 races. If there are less than 16 different winners by the end of race 26, the drivers with the highest amount of points without a win will make it in, and vice versa. If there are more than 16 winners, the lowest in points will fail to make the top 16. After the first three races of the playoffs, the lowest four drivers are eliminated. This is followed by two more rounds of three races apiece, where the lowest four are eliminated at the end, leaving one race at Phoenix to decide the champion. The highest finishing of the four remaining drivers in that race wins the title. This playoff system is largely unpopular, and if you've watched other motorsports series, you'll quickly see how gimmicky it truly is. But regardless, this is how they do it, and NASCAR seems dead set on not changing it. Unlike in previous seasons, the schedule remains mostly the same. With the demolition of Auto Club Speedway, Iowa Speedway finally gets onto the Cup Series schedule for the first time, with the inaugural race planned for June 16th. The Spring Bristol race, which has been held on dirt for the last three seasons, moves back to the track's basic concrete oval. Likewise, instead of running on the Indianapolis road course, 2024 marks the return of one of NASCAR's past crown jewels, the Brickyard 400. We'll have to wait and see just how well the next-gen car performs on the hollowed grounds of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Oval. Some scheduling shifting in the playoffs means that Watkins Glen makes an appearance in the round of 16, as does Atlanta, giving the playoffs two road courses and two drafting tracks, along with the Charlotte Roval and Talladega respectively. With all that being said, let's get into the team and driver lineups for the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season. We'll start off with defending manufacturers champion Chevrolet and their six teams. Unlike Ford and Toyota, Chevy is not bringing a new model into 2024, sticking with the Camaro. It won half the races last year, and Chevy hopes to keep that advantage, even as the other two makes try to make up the difference. Leading the Chevrolet Brigade as usual is Hendrick Motorsports. The 14-time Cup Series champions look to return to the head of the class come season's end. All drivers and crew chiefs remain the same from last season. When you're performing this well, there's not really a need to change things around. Kyle Larson adds to his long racing resume by attempting the Indianapolis 500 for McLaren in May. William Byron hopes to build upon his incredible 2023 season, while fan favorite Chase Elliott and Alex Bowman both look to rebound from disappointing seasons caused by injuries, Elliott breaking his leg in a snowboarding accident and Bowman hurting his neck in a sprint car wreck. Either way, the powerhouse of all powerhouses looks to continue their dominance. The defending Daytona 500 champion Ricky Stenhouse Jr. returns once again to JTG Doherty Racing. Although they were a quick elimination in the round of 16, this team continues to put themselves solidly in the top 20, after a few difficult seasons at the end of the 2010s. Stenhouse will always be a force at Daytona and Talladega, as long as he can stay out of trouble. This team will have a different paint scheme every week, as you can clearly tell by the longest sponsor list you'll see in this entire video. Although JTG Doherty Racing didn't go through much change over the offseason, the same cannot be said for Colleg Racing. With AJ Allmendinger stepping back over to the second tier Xfinity Series, and promising youngster Justin Haley ditching them for Rick Ware Racing of all teams, they seek a fresh start in 2024. Allmendinger will remain in the 16 part-time, with Josh Williams, Colleg's other Xfinity driver, making appearances as well. The 16 car will also be the home of New Zealander Shane Van Gisbergen, running seven races and hoping to emulate his victory last season in Chicago. For Haley's replacement, Colleg brings in a steady set of hands in Daniel Hemrick, who ran for them in Xfinity the last two seasons. They hope that Daniel will continue to be solid and bring home good results. 2023 was a tale of two seasons for Richard Childress Racing. Just as he was becoming a consistent top 15 driver, Austin Dillon posted the lowest average finish of his career and just generally struggled week in and week out. Some blame was placed at the feet of his crew chief, Keith Rodden, who returns for 2024. On the other side of the garage is the number 8 team, which for the second year in a row, won three races. But this time, it was with Kyle Busch and not Tyler Reddick. Kyle's wild switch to RCR for last season came out of the gates on fire, 
winning at Fontana, Talladega, and Gateway in the first half of the season. After the 20th race at New Hampshire though, the wheels fell off, and Kyle went from a championship contender to being eliminated in the round of 12. We know that Kyle is a wheelman, so expect more victories from the A-team this season. While Childress has dreams of emulating past glory, Spire Motorsports looks to the future. With investment from Gainbridge, Spire bought out BJ McLeod's charter for a reported $40 million to launch a third team. Corey LaJoy returns, but the other two teams will be going head-to-head -head in the Rookie of the Year battle. 2022 Truck Series champion Zane Smith signed a development deal with Trackhouse Racing, but Trackhouse was not ready to start a third team, so he'll be placed in the brand new 71 car. Replacing Ty Dillon in the 77 is Truck Series hotshot Carson Hosevar. Hosevar has been a part of plenty of controversial moments in his short time in NASCAR, but he did impress while filling in the 42 car last season. Spire Motorsports has grown so much in the past few seasons. They've gone from sponsorless back of the grid moving chicanes to being a more serious contender, and with help from Chevy and Hendrick Motorsports, LaJoy claims they can make the playoffs. I'll definitely be keeping my eyes on Spire in 2024. Speaking of keeping your eyes on someone, you always have to pay attention to Ross Chastain in the one. Who knows what he'll come up with next? While the infamous Hail Melon may have been banned, Chastain proved he can win races regardless. Although he was a weapon early on last season, he toned down the aggressiveness just enough for it to start paying dividends instead of being a detriment. For Trackhouse's other car, Daniel Suarez hopes that 2024 will be more like 2022 instead of 23. With numerous Trackhouse and Chevy development drivers in the pipeline, Suarez really needs a good season and a return to victory lane. Not saying he's on the hot seat yet, but matching Chastain more often would be a good thing. One good thing out of the Ford camp is the debut of the Mustang Dark Horse, which is much sleeker than its predecessor. Despite winning the championship due to the playoff format, Ford was clearly behind Chevy for most of last season. However, towards crunch time, they did start to turn it on a bit, hence the championship. One team that made a late push in the regular season to lock up a playoff spot was Front Row Motorsports. Once one of NASCAR's goofiest backmarker teams, Front Row has turned into a quality outfit. 2023 was a big year with the team scoring their first win on true pace when Michael McDowell turned into a dominating performance at the Indy Road Course. Sally for them, that race is no more, but the team continues to improve year after year. Todd Gilland in the 38 grows more and more every year. Once thrown aside by Toyota's development system, Gilland has found a true home at Front Row in the car his dad used to drive roughly 15 years ago. NASCAR claimed that the next-gen car, with all its spec parts, would level the playing field some, and no team has highlighted that more than Front Row Motorsports. Front Row's rise, however, has been aided by the turnaround of RFK Racing. In the second year with Brad Keselowski as co-owner, the former Roush Racing had a big season in 2023. Although Keselowski failed to win a race, his teammate Chris Buescher scored three wins in what was his breakout season. It's going to be pretty cool when Brad himself finally gets to victory lane in the sixth car, and I expect it to happen this season. The tools are all there for this team to continue being consistently in the top 10 week in and week out. With Keselowski's overhaul of the operations, expect more great things from RFK Racing and their affiliate teams like Front Row and Rick Ware Racing. One good thing about the charter system is that it forces even the back markers at the tail of the field to invest in their program, and Rick Ware Racing has done a lot of that over the offseason. Signing Justin Haley away from Colleague was a surprise, and splitting up the 15 car between Kaz Grala and Riley Herbst shows they're investing in youth over the journeymen they usually hire. It'll be fascinating to see how Haley can do full-time in the 51, and how his season compares to his time at Colleague. Rick Ware Racing is another team that is trying to make genuine strides and move themselves further up the grid. One team looking to do that exact thing is a former powerhouse. It wasn't that long ago that Stuart Haas Racing competed for championships, but they have fallen behind the eight ball compared to other big teams. Hell, even last year they rolled off the truck horribly and spent the most of the first two stages of any race trying to fix it. Kevin Harvick is now retired, which is a big blow, and it remains to see how his replacement Josh Berry will do full-time in Cup. The good news for Barry is that Rodney Childers remains atop the pit box. Eric Almarola lost his seat in the 10 due to Smithfield reducing their funding, so he'll be replaced by Noah Gragson. Gragson had a strong end to his time in Xfinity, but his cup career has been a disaster so far. Chase Briscoe hopes to bounce back from a horrendous 2023. In 2022, he won a race and finished 9th in points, but last year he plummeted all the way down to an astonishing 30th, and he deserves better than that. And finally, Ryan Priest hopes to build upon last season's efforts and show what he's made of at the cup level. Team Penske houses the defending cup champion Ryan Blaney. 
Blaney and the 12 crew went on an insane late season run to win the title, and they hope to carry that forward in 2024. Joey Logano struggled some in his title defense last year, but because 2024 is an even numbered year, expect him to be in the final four come Phoenix and battle for the title to the very end. Austin Sindrick looks to overcome his sophomore slump in the iconic two car and return to victory lane for the first time since the 2022 Daytona 500. As always, there's no reason why Penske won't be up there as the top three team in the series, especially if Ford's new body proves it can make up the arrow gap to the Chevrolets. In association with Penske, the oldest team in the field, the Wood Brothers, is ready to go once again with Harrison Burton. He struggled in the Cup Series, but not everyone is an overnight sensation. Hopefully we see Burton in the iconic 21 back towards the sharper end of the field more often than not in 2024. And with all this manufacturer talk, it's time to get to Toyota who like Ford has a sleek new body style. The new Camry is much more rounded on the nose, a big departure from the angular grille of the old model. Another goal of Toyota was to grow in numbers. Last year Chevy had 7 teams and Ford had 6 compared to Toyota's 2. Well, Toyota managed to bring one Chevy team into the fold, and it was quite a big fish. Nearly all of Jimmy Johnson's racing career dating back to his off-road days has been with Chevrolet. As owner of Legacy Motor Club, he and the other executives felt that they were too low on the Chevy totem pole to have success, so they switched allegiances to Toyota. This also means that the iconic Petty 43 will be a Toyota for the first time. 2023 was a dismal season for the team, the first with Johnson as co-owner, and it needed a little bit of shaking up. John Hunter Nemechek finally returns to the Cup Series in the 42 car. Nemechek spent 2020 driving the 38 for front row, but decided to take a demotion to the truck series to get into the Toyota pipeline. Well, it's paid off because after a lot of success in trucks and Xfinity, he's back in cup. Eric Jones returns once again to the 43 car, trying to get back to his 2022 form where he finished top 20 in points and won the Southern 500. 2311 racing picks up where they left off last year. Tyler Reddick won twice in his first season in the 45 and Bubba Wallace returns to the 23. Not much change here. Expect Reddick to be a true contender in the coming season. He seems like a star in the making, and he's a wheelman to boot. I think this team will continue to get better with their new shop and all the investment. Joe Gibbs Racing returns all four of their drivers. Denny Hamlin will once again try to close out a championship, and you know he's going to be a threat. Martin Truex Jr. was on the verge of retirement last season, but some strong performances convinced him to come back again. Christopher Bell had a great season and was in contention for the title at Phoenix before a brake failure took him out. Expect the 20 car to be up front a lot. There should be lots of battling between Bell and his fellow dirt guy Kyle Larson, two of the more talented drivers in Cup today. Ty Gibbs did his rookie season right and stayed mostly under the radar after his tumultuous season in Xfinity the year prior. But with a year of experience in Cup, Gibbs should start mixing it up with the big boys for better or worse. We'll have to wait and see what fireworks may arise as Ty takes that next step towards success. Those were the 36 chartered entries in the NASCAR Cup Series for 2024, but there's still some part-time programs that need mentioning. Beard Motorsports will once again only run Daytona and Talladega, two races with Anthony Alfredo, and possibly the other two with Austin Hill. BJ McLeod plans to enter Cup races despite selling his charter to Spire Motorsports. If it is true that McLeod made $40 million out of the deal, then there might be some slightly improved performance out of Live Fast Motorsports. New York Racing Team and the Money Team Racing are two fly-by-night operations that don't ever have finalized plans until the day of the race basically. They're not likely to run much, if at all. Trackhouse Racing has yet to finalize any plans for their Project 91 entry. With SVG driving the 16 for Colleg in a partnership with Trackhouse, we may see other drivers try their hand in the 91 car. Will Kimi Raikkonen return for a third straight season? Perhaps we finally see the long-rumored NASCAR debut of four-time Indy 500 winner Elio Castroneves. Either way, expect Justin Marks to pull something special out of his hat if the timing is right and funding is found. Kaz Grala will attempt the Daytona 500 in a third car for front row while Riley Herbst is in the 15 car for that race. Much like Trackhouse Racing, RFK Racing is launching their third team as a part-time entry under the Stage 60 banner. Former Roush driver David Reagan will come back to the team to run the car in the Daytona 500. It's been heavily rumored that Australian supercars driver Cam Waters will join Van Gisbergen and Brody Kostecki in making the jump from Australia and New Zealand to NASCAR by running the 60 car in three road course races. 
Speaking of Brody Kostecki, he was rumored to once again drive the 33 car for RCR in a partnership with his supercars team, but he and his team over there had a big falling out, the details of which I'm not entirely privy to, so this deal is up in the air at the present moment. Another all-star car might be the 67 for 2311. Kamui Kobayashi drove it at Indy last season, and David Wilson, president of TRD, said it's not out of the question for that car to show up again this season. Finally, the last part-time car will be a third Legacy Motor Club Toyota for team co-owner Jimmy Johnson. His part-time campaign last year ended in three crashes in all three races, before having to sit out his remaining outings while dealing with personal tragedy. Hopefully things will be better for JJ in 2024. It'll certainly be striking to see Johnson run his first NASCAR race, not in his Chevrolet. Well that's it, the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series grid. I hope if you're new you get a little bit more idea about the teams and the driver lineups, and I hope you're able to enjoy a full season of action and fun. The Daytona 500 is always an event worth watching, and the rest of the season builds off of it. Perhaps come November we'll look back at this video and see what we got right, and what was way off. Either way, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe for more NASCAR content. Thank you.